the heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established. Leave us in awe.
Our sex, second scripture reading is from John chapter 2, verses 11 through 18. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. Today's sermon, The Joy of Being Sheep, will be given by the Reverend Dr. John Lee Manson. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, who is our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. is the Latin 
the word for shepherd. But all of us who are pastors will always look at God and say that God is the good shepherd and we are merely one of God's sheep as well. Which brings us to this realization. Brings us to this stunning realization, if we have any logic at all, is God has given us an image that God is our shepherd and we are God's sheep. And I have to tell you, the more I think about this and the more I thought about it, my impression of being a sheep was not a positive impression. Sheep are considered to be smelly, stupid animals. And to be quite honest, I like to consider myself as being good at being humble. And I don't like the image of being called stupid or smelly. I might be, but I try not to be, and if I am, please don't tell me. <laughs> but most of us do not embrace the image of being stupid and smelly and say, oh boy, I always wanted to be that. But if you look at the image some more, within the context of the Bible, the image of God as shepherd and people as sheep begins to make sense. Now here is a thing about goats and sheep in the Bible. Goats and sheep are the two most important animals in the Bible. For the people in that era and the people in that culture, goats and sheep, especially sheep, are the animals that ran the economy. The goats were used for milk, they were, used, they were eaten, they were used for meat, their skin was used to make articles and sometimes clothing. When we hear about Jesus talking about wineskins, wineskins were made out of goats. And they were used in the temple for sacrifice because they were precious <laughs> in God's sight. Sheep were also used for sacrifice. They were also used for meat, especially as lambs. Their milk was used by people. But what made sheep really important and a driving force, of course, in the economy was that sheep had wool on them. And the wool could be sheared off and used, and the wool would grow back. Sheep were a renewable resource. And if you lived in that time and place, your clothing was made from wool. They did not have polyester. They did not have cotton. They had wool. So no matter how hot it was, no matter how irritating it was, you were going to be wearing wool. And sheep were the one piece of livestock that were valuable when it was alive than when it was dead. So sheep were really, really crucial to the economy and to the well-being of people. Very important, the most important aspect of life. Sheep were in many ways what we would consider oil to be ours. They were, a, they were a resource that people needed each and every day. And there were certain attributes of sheep that people have. The first is the tendency to nibble ourselves lost. I, I suspect all of us, if we were going to be honest, would say we have all at some point in our lives done something wrong. We've done something dumb and foolish, sometimes unintentionally and sometimes very intentionally. We've done things that were wrong, and we knew they were wrong, but we did them anyway. And that is what is called sin. And chances are also good when we got up in the morning or looked at the universe around us, we did not get up out of bed in the morning and sit up and say, what a glorious day to sin. Most of us just don't do that. Most of us tend to just sort of nibble our way to it. People who grapple with addiction issues find their way of nibbling themselves into that. The first time they take drugs, the first drink they may take, the first cigarette they may smoke. The first time we do something, there is not an intention of saying, I'm going to do this and start my life in a very difficult way. We tend to nibble ourselves lost. Sheep are like that as well. When sheep graze, they tend to lower their head and graze. 
they go, and they go, and they go, and they don't really look up, and when they look up, they find that they are lost. Sheep do not plan on getting lost. It just will really happen. They nibble themselves lost. And like sheep, because we nibble ourselves lost, we need a shepherd who guides us back. Second thing we do, second aspect we share with sheep. Sheep, one of the things that makes a sheep graze was sheep graze in a destructive manner. And shepherds have to keep moving them around to keep them from destroying the environment of the area. If you put cows in a pasture, they will eat the tops off of the grass and keep mowing. And if you ever really want to get away with not mowing your lawn very much, just buy some cows and put them out front. Your neighbors will be happy and they'll just nibble away and keep your grass nice and short. Sheep, however, when left untended, will not only eat the top of the grass, but they'll eat the middle of the grass, the bottom of the grass, and they will go into the dirt and pull out the, root, the roots. When sheep graze, they will just completely destroy the environment that they are in. They do not look up, they do not pay attention, and unless they are being guided and pushed and urged, they just tend to destroy wherever they're at. We tend to do the same thing as human beings. We don't really mean to do it, but we do it. This past Wednesday was Earth Day. And it was a day when people are reminded of good ecology. And it's something I like to think we've gotten better at. When I was on sabbatical in New Jersey, I stopped and looked at a river, um, the Passaic River, which is now blue. When I was growing up, the Passaic River was a combination of murky green and brown, and it was considered to be the most polluted river in the country. The running joke was that if Jesus had tried to walk across the Passaic River, it wouldn't have been a miracle because there was so much garbage in there, he could have walked right across it, with the only hazard being slipping on an oil slick somewhere in the middle of the river. It was that bad. Even the Hudson River between New York and New Jersey is blue, which is absolutely amazing. We have a tendency to destroy the environment around us. We just do. If we find something and we like it, we will get it. You know, the California gold rush, they pretty much wiped out the gold. In South Africa, they worked at wiping out the diamonds. We try to do this, and wherever we are, we tend to use up what's around us unless we are super careful, unless someone guides us away from that. We're a lot like sheep in that way. But the third thing is the most important. As sheep were precious in the eyes of the people of that era, we are precious in the sight of God. One of my favorite songs is Psalm 8. Psalm 8 speaks about the preciousness of people in the sight of God. Who are we that God cares for us so much? Who are we that God loves us so much? Who are we to celebrate a psalm that reminds us that God is our shepherd, who cares for us, guides us, and loves us? Who are we that Jesus is our good shepherd, who will even lay down his life to protect us? The reality is that God loves us, and God loves us more than we love one another. I was watching a television show on the Discovery Channel the other day, and it was on predators. And the predators were lions and tigers and sharks. And I was also struck by an event of the week that um, human beings are more effective predators against human beings than anyone else. This past Friday marked the 100th anniversary of an event that most people are really unaware of. It marked what was a day that was called Armenian Martyrs Day. 100 years ago, in the year 1915, the Ottoman Empire, the nation of modern-day Turkey, began to exterminate Ar uh, Armenians in their midst. And they devastated the population. They murdered one and a half million Armenians. It was a massive genocide, and the biggest genocide of World War I. 
Over 1.5 million Armenians were killed. And this event has gone by largely unknown and largely unnoticed by the world. And largely written off as a few soldiers behaving badly after losing a battle. A few soldiers behaving badly exterminated 1.5 million people. Not in this universe. Within the Natural of Christ, many of us are aware of this because we have a significant number of ethnic Armenian congregations that are part of that are part of our denomination and have been. Right outside Philadelphia, there is a United Church of Christ congregation called the Church of the Armenian Martyrs. Just recently, about a month ago, the Pope called out and said this was a genocide, and the nation of Turkey was offended and removed all of their diplomatic people from Vatican City, merely because the Pope happened to say something that was factually true. 1.5 million people. To put that in a point of reference, the United States in its entire history, its entire history, in every single war up till this point, has lost a little over 1.3 million soldiers in battle. That is every war. That includes war now, it includes the American Revolution. It includes World War I, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, the Civil War. It even includes Custer's Last Stand and all the battles that took place during that time period. It even, it, it even includes everything. A little over 1.3 million Americans have died in war. And we rightly honor those people every year and we are challenged and told not to forget and we shouldn't because of the sacrifice they made. 1.5 million Armenians in a relatively short period of time. Almost 200,000 more of them died than we have lost than all of our soldiers. And it is, it is an event that has largely been ignored. Chances are good most of us did not learn about it in school. I know I did. Or we were just, it was glossed over. We are so amazingly cruel to each other. And I'm not saying that as the ultimate act of cruelty. Honestly, honestly, there are events that are happening right now that are awful as well. And there have been horrendous events in all of human history. Sometimes we're even willing to overlook things. Reminds us that God loves us more and God cares for us more than we care for and love one another. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Easter is a season of hope and we're still in that Easter season. It is a season, it is a season that also includes one Sunday, this Sunday when all the churches around the country gather and look at one psalm and one image of God. God as our shepherd and Jesus as the good shepherd. And it's a reminder that God is indeed our shepherd and we are indeed God's sheep. Hopefully not because we're stupid and smelly, but truthfully because we nibble ourselves lost. We tend to overwhelm that which is around us. And we don't love each other nearly as much as God loves us. The Lord is our shepherd. We shall not want. Amen. I'm going to invite everyone, we're going to pray, pray responsibly that we're eating one with our hymnals knee bow and body bent, which is a prayer based upon God being our shepherd. And during this time, I would like us to remember the family of Donald Dooley, the family of Stephen Law, um, Chris Schneider's grandmother, um, who passed away all of her family. Um, and please continue to, to remember uh, Dean, which is still in uh, rehab in Mexico. And also all the people in the hall for a really painful time. Lord, we come this morning, we bowed and body wet body wet.
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
are showing us how to do the same for others so that we may make our world a better place for all. Amen. Thank you, Sunshine, for all the people I put to sleep during the sermon. <laughs> Why are you laughing? No. <laughs> Let us do our commission this morning responsibly to Pete after me. Let us go forth into the world in peace. Let us go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord. Love and serve the Lord. Rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And let us sing of God as our shepherd with hymn number 79. Yeah.